In today's video, we are going to build this very detailed indoor lion habitat. How we are going to do this, well, you're going to find out in today's time lapse. All right, welcome back to the very realistic lion habitat. Episode number two of, not two actually, uh, of three. So first things first, uh, this is going to be uh, the second part of three in total. I decided to split that up into just another video because, oh my boy, this has been so much work. Over four hours have been gone into this very indoor section, um, including some bigger changes in the background that you don't really see from the video but you will see that later on in the real time part um, so I'm going to not reveal that quite yet maybe you're going to spot this during this video or not um, but it is going to be one of the biggest uh, fan favorites I guess um, one question that you guys have asked me to do for such a long time and I decided to do so I hate myself for doing that but uh, <laughs> it's for the better I'm, I'm quite certain that this is going to be good but um, yeah so today in the time lapse I'm going to take the time to really talk you through through all my process of thinking about this habitat in particular, all my research done and all these kind of things. So please stick with me um, for several reasons. First of all, it's going to be interesting hopefully for you. Second of all, this uh, boosts the algorithm and you help me by just having a good time. How cool is that, right? Um, and also um, you might find some cool little hints to what the future holds um, for my channel and stuff like that as always in the video. So let's do this. Okay, first things first. Um, this habitat is inspired hugely by a um, uh, vast number of different indoor habitats I found on ZooChat. Now, for those of you who don't know ZooChat.com, what are you even doing? Because that is potentially the number one source uh, for good zoo builders, if you will. Um, there is a lot of info on there. There's a lot of good discussions in the comments, but most of all, there are some absolutely fantastic um, photos of the different habitats and this is something I really 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 enjoy looking at um, quite a lot. Now there is obviously a lot of hints for the practicability of a habitat. You can see some of the backstage stuff that is in there. You can see some of the some of the things they use to make these habitats work better. And uh, yeah, so we're starting here with the general layout of this area. You can see I'm building a quite huge um, glass front over here. This is one side glass so that the lines won't be distracted from all the people on the other side. However, there's also going to be this. Um, middle wall you've seen to separate the little shop front from the rest of it so I wanted to make sure that if the people do queue up for these shops which they will eventually do um, that they will not be directly um, seen by the window or also that the sound is not going to be directly over there um, I thought a long time about if I wanted to close up the upper section of the window where I put the mesh fence now but oh boy these lines are very smelly and if you go into these houses they are most most often quite smelly uh, indeed um, so there's not not a big <laughs> or great odor in there um, and I kind of incorporated quite a lot of windows we have a lot of windows that have also can be kept open the whole time at the end you will see there's also going to be a huge um, ventilation system installed which uh, I'm even trying to complete in the in the last episode and in a realistic way so with all the connections and stuff um, this build is also going to be uh, that realistic in in the sense of using space in a realistic way so there's not going to be hidden spaces that couldn't exist in real life so everything is connected how it could only be connected in real life um, that is a, an additional challenge obviously for me but um, that's what this series is about I highly recommend to stick with me for the um, real-time part because that always helps and also you know if you're not subscribed to the channel you want to see more stuff like that in the future Hit that little red button, as you can see also on screen with that little notification. Um, just a little segue here into, you know, into into telling you that this is good. Never mind, let's let's keep on talking. You can see in the front of the habitat, um, I'm putting a lot of plants. Now, here's the thing. Um, indoor in here with these plants, it's not a big deal to have um, all the typical plants because they can be grown uh, indoors simply because you can keep the temperature and light condition how you need that. Um, speaking of light, I haven't done the lighting completely yet. You will see quite a bit in this uh, video, um, but there's going to be something else uh, you'll see then in the real time part. But as for the foliage in front of the building, I decided to go with some African plants that can 
at least with a little bit of extra care, grow in most areas of the world. So if you're going to put this um, thing down into your zoos, most of these things could be growing um, in there as well. Some of these trees, like, just like the olive tree or this kind of palm tree, they are quite some robust uh, trees when it comes to, you know, growing in certain areas, if you do put some care to them. Um, I mean, obviously, you won't be able to grow them in Norway uh, in the north, and you won't be able to grow them in the Arctic, obviously, and... They potentially also have a hard time in the desert, um, like in the complete desert without any, you know, um, kind of liquid around. Um, but yeah, other than that, I I decided to use these as kind of a little welcoming aspect. Um, Zeus do this quite often to play with the foliage to, to grant the people already a little bit of a um, subtle... Uh, thing to, that they already know where they're going um, and I wanted to play with this again but you can also see that I'm going to do a lot of functioning stuff in here um, so we not only have the foliage but we also have some planters and stuff to keep um, the overall air conditioning in here quite good so plants help with this a little bit um, and so I kept this also in here some planters in which we can have some uh, nice grower bolts that uh, can you know take care of the of the <laughs> maybe not that nice air uh, condition in here but we obviously speaking of air condition this is going to receive some pretty you know decent air conditioning units as well just to make sure but you can see I'm putting some trees down here to play with the theme a little bit and if you if you want to put this thing in a, in a modern zoo this is obviously one of the more expensive builds and I would say definitely um, not older than 2010 and onwards uh, maybe even 2015 and onwards many Many zoos in real life um, nowadays become more and more theme park connected, if you will, and um, they try to mimic a lot of things that theme parks do, um, focus on education, obviously, but also making sure um, that they have a very interesting theming going on to make people immerse themselves a bit more. Um, as we all know, it's not for the animals, uh, because the animals, well, in fact, they don't really care as long, they have, as, long as they have enough space, the right, you know, the, the right terrain, the, the right plants in terms of not even the right type of plants, but the amount and some stuff to hide, for example. And of course, I mean, if they do eat certain plants, they need those as well. But other than that, they don't really care about any theming. It's not like that a lion tells you, hey, wait a second, that doesn't look like a savanna. I'm not going to... I'm not going to be well. It's it's not really the the case, you know, um, and this is this is why. Now, as I said already in the last video, I did some um, additional research on lions themselves, and uh, you guys put this in the comments as well. Um, lions already lived um, quite everywhere in Europe and uh, Africa and stuff like that. So only because of poaching and uh, climate change and stuff, it was that they were pushed back into the area where they live right now. But they have been noted roaming around um, up until the very uh, central European area of um, even southern Germany um, have noted lions living there even in the last 200 years. So it's not, li not like that long ago. Um, and it's very interesting to note because they, they can actually adjust pretty well to some climate areas. And this is also why the indoor section of this thing is kept relatively small, at least the one that you can see. They have quite a bigger one in the back area here, as you can see, um, where we will have some cages and stuff like the normal backstage zoo stuff that people won't see. Um, and the normal indoor section that I'm building right now is relatively small and might only be interesting for them in the very winter when it's actually not that easy to go out. Like if if it's minus degrees or stuff like that um, or very very bad raining days or whatnot that that is something that you know um would be would be something to do yeah, anyways um now also the outside of the building really didn't click with me uh, the whole time so um i then decided to completely change the outer appearance of this build i wanted to make it look a bit more classic i just try to use that you know little bridge piece there because i like the idea of having like a roundish entrance but then i figured with everything i did it's just not going to work and um yeah i ended up using using a lot more of a classical approach here but to be honest um i quite like this a lot more uh, doing the lighting properly so that everything is just in line lit, lit very nicely and just making sure that everything looks just in place i 
I guess that's what I wanted to do. And also making sure that the lighting indoors uh, works as well. I quite often forget about that. And so um, I try to do some, also I love, I love this little lamppost over here. I love this little thing. It's just so simple, um, but I like this design. It's basically the smallest light bulb we have and then connected with this, I believe it's the fan piece or it's the neon, neon pipe end piece. Not sure which of both it is. I think it's the fan piece, but anyways, um, I thought it just worked pretty well. And so I used that, putting some other lamps here and there as well to make it look good um, but eventually I, I'm not quite sure even because many zoos do not have open that long so maybe the lighting is only relevant for winter times when it's getting um, darker already before the zoo closes um, I think this is the only time when you need that lighting to be frankly honest because otherwise it's just not there but yeah I um, also decided to put some trees here on the front plaza to make it look a bit more connected and you know not that super open and started to put down some trees here um, the rest of the habitat we're going to talk about in the real-time section but uh, the indra section for me was very important so that you understood um, obviously one thing we have to mention is and this is also another comment that you guys came up with um, dead ends many zoos try to not have that many dead ends or no dead ends at all if possible um, however in this specific case um, I decided to make this habitat as kind of a framing habitat for zoos in general. Now, what you see quite often also with lion habitats is that they, I mean, it's not like that it's there more often than not to the outside of the park, but they take a huge space of the zoo if done right, because they need quite a lot of space in comparison to other animals. And that is why it would make sense that a habitat like lions could be to the outside of your zoo area. And this specific habitat is meant to be an outside habitat. So obviously, yes, we have some dead ends in here. Even actually, we will create three dead ends <laughs> at the same time time here um, but they all won't be as specifically problematic and I'm going to explain this in the real-time part um, if you consider this to be um, a habitat that is always to the outside of your zoo there are many reasons to why that would be clever to position this very habitat to the outside um, I mean mainly to to grant you have the most space available but also to you know grant access to some vehicles and stuff pretty easily from the outside of the zoo uh, this is something I also considered um, but this is you know topic for this is a topic for the next episode yeah you can see some windows uh, that kept open here as well making sure that we have like this little slider mechanic that you know the windows can slide through uh, open and close all the time pretty easily um, potentially they will be connected mechanically nowadays and you know you can make that remote and you don't have anyone to get up the roof but we will still get some staircases up to the roof next time making sure that this all works and you can see this is the beginning now of the cages and the cage system but I'm gonna say already this is not the final version it's just like more or less a placeholder to get an idea of where the cages would be um, I gotta have to do a little bit more research on where exactly the doors would be and and how the staff members get in there without meeting the, the lions in the first place so anyways let's jump over to the real-time class uh, part and uh, talk more about this finished build All right, so we are in front of the West African Lion House. And um, yeah, one thing I wanted to show you real quick is, yes, we are in the same file as the Red Panda House is. And um, this is something that you guys all wished for. You wanted to make, um, or wanted me to make a hyper-realistic zoo. And I kind of struggled all the time to do that because I felt this is a little bit too much. But there is going to be something uh, about this, which I'm going to talk about in the end. So stick with me till the final minutes of this video, because I'm going to talk about what exactly is going to happen with this. It's going to be very, very fun. Um, and uh, yeah, something I haven't done so far. So really interesting to, to see what you guys say against that. But now, or for that. So we are having a little looky look now at this. You can see I put down some decals everywhere to make it look a little bit more used. So you can see there are some, some little grass there's like some some pla uh, some of the bricks are open um, you can imagine that this is like a full brick building and then they just have you know kind of painted some plaster on top of it uh, to make it look a bit more nice but then again plaster just kind of broke down here to the side and you know just making that all look a little bit more realistic even though looking at that you can see there's also some dirt up here um, even though looking at that from the first uh, 
point, you will never notice that there is something like that. And yeah, that's just so much more realistic. There's a little crack here in that. Um, yeah, I thought that would be just like a marble tile, tile or something. There's some dirt below the shop front because I imagine like all the drinks and stuff, some people will just, you know, spill them over or so. Um, maybe something gets broken or, you know, kind of like little things like this, you know, make this more dirty and grungy like other part there's a bit here water from the plants and stuff make this uh, or like attack this a little bit more and they can see some lions already look at that i love that i love that can we just also change the sun a little bit maybe maybe we can change the sun in the way that we can see them a little bit oh just like ever so slightly ah that's such a such a shame but maybe we're gonna keep it this way look at that i love i love I love how this looks like if you go in here you have that wonderful glass front and then the lions and oh god it looks so good doesn't it I really do enjoy that quite a bit now this is this is the build you can see uh, I think the African vibes can can be felt in here and you can see up here the roof structure and stuff everything looks like um, this is like a very functioning a functional building but then again um, the theming has to be put on top of it rather than rather than the whole thing is going to be too themed you can see there is some of the ventilation i was talking about there is some dirt up here as well like little cracks and stuff there was some cracks down here from the water of this tree maybe same goes over there and then if you look here down here there's a couple of a lot of uh dirt and stuff because many people would be here look oh my god look at that oh no why is the why is the animation broken this time around i wanted to take that as a oh there you go i can i can maybe take that as a thumbnail love this look at that this looks fantastic um i wonder though if and i want to just quickly see if that works can i can i just quickly change the sun a little bit oh my god this is this is blinding light there you go this is exactly let's just click okay so we have to go to 12 that that's kind of the time i wanted to and if we zoom in like this a little and i want to i want to have some depth of field you can't see that right now but i'm gonna i'm gonna do the thumbnail shot with you alive now oh, love i love this look at that. i'm just gonna go zoom out a little so we have more in the frame maybe later on so there you go once like that and i'm gonna zoom all the way in like this oh that's such a beautiful shot look at that i just love this shot with the lion there the lioness i should say and zoom in a little oh boy that looks really really dang cool i i do i do really love this and uh, oh my god look at look at all of that it's just just inch perfect can i i want to have this tree maybe a little bit more in the frame I just zoom out a tiny bit like this oops there you go ah uh, i'm too far off there you go okay never mind that's it i uh, didn't want to bother you too long with it but now as i have the perfect animation there with the line i wanted to keep that so i also use a little trick over here um, I lower down the scratch post a little bit so um, that when people are in here you can see the lines a little bit better from above and um, if they scratch you have them almost on eye level with you so that's kind of cool see you later okay bye 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 okay bye um, so yeah there's also like another information screen which uh, is going to use the new function with the upcoming update 1.9 uh, so I'm gonna put some webcams in here and then connect them with these screens all the way over here so that's pretty cool this is why I haven't connected them quite yet I also love the roof structure I think it, the, the roof structure looks really fantastic in here um, and yeah some little planters and stuff but one thing i wanted to quickly show you let's go in here into that door and then boom there's like a little hallway over here which is going to be the real one i have to still make that look nice but yeah then you go down here and boom you are in the backstage of the lions you can see and this is how it all comes together i just kind of quickly closed off uh, these uh, exits to make sure that the lines keep inside for the moment being for this episode I'm gonna have to move some of the gates here so that they can go in every single one of those also where's the male line i'm just gonna miss out on the on the big daddy i don't know where he is but yeah um I really think this is this turned out super well. I'm just thinking about how I can get more sunlight in this building. I have no clue exactly how. However, let's zoom out quickly and you can see the building from above. I'm I'm more and more happy with how that turned out in total. A um, couple of things we have to do. Oh, look at that. One, is, one made its way outside. Oh, and the male one as well. Okay, so then roaming outside, so that's fine. Um, 
yeah, okay. Let me just uh, first of all talk you through what's happening in the third episode. Um, this build over here is going to be um, more or less done to the outside, but the inside or like the backstage will receive like a complete overhaul. This is going to be like a little bit of a parking lot. We've got some trash cans and stuff like this, you know, making this backstage look a lot more like, well, a backstage. And then one thing we have to do as well is, um, and I finally decided on what to do, we're going to make like a little outlook that is going to be here. So basically we raise the path a little bit. So you have like a little bit of a um, roundabout up here in which you can see a bit more of the back area, um, but the lines should not be distracted by you. So we're going to use a bit more of terraforming here to make like a nice little uh, terraformed wall. And then um, we are going to have one thing that you mentioned in the comments as well. There's going to be like a little bit of a somewhat chilly rock or something in the middle here for the male lion. As you said, there's always um, some zoos use like a car or something or like a truck. I'm thinking about this as well. Could be cool. Um, so that they're like kind of, you know, climbing up on there and then just chilling. But look at the whole space they have. And then this is more or less done. A couple of security reasons uh, we have to do. We have to do some fencing over here so that they don't jump down to the people and just kill them. Um, and uh, yeah, some more venting and stuff, some more roof design and then we are good to go. Now, as you can see, this is the build so far and this is going to be like a realistic zoo. However, I'm going to keep it super small, super, super small. We're going to make like two or three others maybe. Um, and then I'll hand this over to other people to make the connection work. And um, I'm not 100% sure how I'll do this quite yet. Maybe I'm going to make like weekly challenges out of it um, so that I'm going to send the file over to someone and then... Um, you can do it or a second potential thing to do is kind of making challenges out of it so i'm going to give away dlcs and then i'm going to upload this file and you have to send this back into me after a week and the winner that is going to be voted by you guys um is going to receive the dlc code and uh, is going to make it well also by staying inside of the file not sure how i'm going to do this exactly but um there are two ways of doing so so please let me know in the comments down below if you think this is a cool idea or not um i am very excited uh to do this because i think it really deserves it and really deserves like a very realistic connection maybe with like restaurants or fountains or plazas or whatnot people can come up with anyways this should be it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed this video and again guys if you want to help me grow i really would love if you consider subscribing if you haven't already i know that youtube is a weird place and many of you may not have subscribed but they see the videos all the time and that is enough for you which i totally get but if you don't feel bad about pressing that red button i would be more than happy because because me, um, personally, that helps the most because that tells YouTube that you enjoy my videos. Um, even though you have it on the front page or not, it, it doesn't matter. YouTube needs to know that you sub and that, that is always super helpful. So if you want to consider doing so, that would be super cool. But other than that, in these weird times, guys, uh, stay safe, everyone. Uh, have a good time. Have a good week ahead. And I'll talk to you in the next one.